I looked back at Rich, he gave me the thumbs up, he was on the animal and it was go time. As I looked through the scope, I relaxed, I slowed my breathing and I pulled the trigger. This episode of African Hunter has been brought to you by Sniper Africa and East Cape Bushveld Hunting. Hunting is one thing, but you know, getting a hunt on camera is a whole adventure in itself. And I'd been to East Cape Bushveld Hunting before and seen that just the sheer amount of animals there. Uh, so I knew that this was the place that I wanted to get my hunt on camera. So the plan was not only to get two trophy animals, but to get it all on camera as well. And as you know, in the African bush, things don't always work out to plan. We met up with Nico Els, the PA who runs East Cape Bushveld Hunting, and after a long day of travel, we discussed the plans for the next day's hunt around the fire, and then spent the night at the lodge. We awoke to an incredible sunrise the next morning, and after an early breakfast, we headed off. The plan was to go after a nice springbuck ram that had been separated from the herd, and Nico wanted us to take this particular animal. Nico grew up on this farm and he knows the place so well, he knew exactly where those springbok were going to be. Nico strategized the stalk perfectly, we had the wind in our favor, the sun was directly behind us, and as we moved down towards the animals, we were surrounded by bush, which meant that we were in the shade, and unless we made some major movement, that animal was not going to see us. Okay, we've just spotted the animal lying down at the bottom of this hill here. Yeah? And uh, Nico's just trying to identify to see if it's the one that, that we're after. Um, if it's not, we'll have to try and find the other one. And if it is, we're probably going to have to wait for it to present a better shot. It's kind of facing towards us. Okay, there's another one to our left. Okay. Um, but I think they are fairly the same size. Okay. But I think the other one might be a little bit younger. Okay, so this one will be the one we want to shoot. I had a perfect view of the springbuck and I set up for the shot. I could have taken it right there, but remember, we wanted to get the shot on camera, so we needed to allow Richard to get a clear frame. So initially I just hung back and let Nico just step forward and make sure that he can see the animal, he knows where the animal is, and then first call Matten to get set up and then I'm last. Finally the moment came, I, I crept forward making as little sound as I can got my frame in place and the buck was out in the open, it looked like it was going to go down right now. Pressed record, it was all systems go. And then the springbuck moved behind a cactus. And the cactus was in frame, Matt could have taken the shot but I just didn't have the shot I was looking for. Richard signalled to me and we decided to abort for the moment and we just moved about 5 metres closer so that Richard could position himself where I was sitting. We knew that at any moment the buck could move off and we would have missed our chance, but we had to get that shot on camera. But we kept calm, Nico told us that he knew the animal would move into the space if we just waited, and lo and behold, the animal walked perfectly into the space. I was able to wait for it to turn broadside so I could get a good angle on it. I remember just waiting for my heart to, to calm down, I was so excited. I lined up on the animal's heart, pulled the trigger, and I just remember out of the corner of my eye seeing that animal just drop straight down and just a huge explosion of dust right behind it and it was absolutely awesome. I looked at him, he threw a fist pump in the air, we both just laughed. I mean, absolutely awesome. We nailed the shot with the gun and the camera exactly what we had hoped for. We were playing cat and mouse with that thing for a while. Uh, it wasn't too difficult getting within range. Uh, the difficulty was trying to get a clear window but uh, Nico put us on the shot nicely, just put the crosses on the heart and pulled the trigger and he went straight down. So I'm very happy, eh? I really couldn't be happier. It's a nice way to start the day. So it's time to walk down and go and see the animal and uh, you know there's just this huge sigh of relief after a moment like this. Well that's it for the morning, uh, that was a, a really awesome hunt, good start to the day. Uh, we're going to head back, uh, see if we can get ourselves some, some food and then head off and see if we can get something a little bit bigger later today. We loaded the springbuck onto the truck 
made our way back to the farmhouse and, and immediately started talking about the next animal. After we had taken the springbuck back to the lodge, we decided to assess our options. The weather was getting a bit ugly, there was thunder and lightning in the sky and we could see rain in the distance, but we decided to head out anyway after something a little bit bigger. The plan was to go after a nice impala ram and Nico basically led us through the bushes, uh, in through valleys and up mountains. This is a nice uh, vantage point here to see, to kind of look around and spot the animals. Yeah. It's the way I prefer to hunt. Uh, I'd usually find myself a vantage point and then spend a bit of time there to see what's going on, where the animals, what are they doing, yeah. are they grazing or browsing, where are they browsing to. We were actually out on the ridge for a really long time. Nico wanted to, to glass all the spots where he knew the impala liked to graze so we could assess our options. And after a while, we actually spotted a really nice ram, but it was a long way off. There was a small gap between the bushes where I could have set up for the shot, but I wasn't going to risk it at that distance, and there was just no possible way to set up the camera as well. That impala is obviously, he's, 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 he's aware that something's wrong. You can see he's, he's, he's headed up, he's looking around the whole time. So it's not going to be easy to get close to. And it was quite interesting how these animals that we weren't targeting were so close, uh, they must have known. And somehow the impala just knew and kept eluding us. We'd been stalking this animal for a good few hours, but every time we made ground, it would slip further and further away, and, if, and eventually we lost it completely. At this point, the weather was getting so bad that we were actually going to call it a day, and as we were heading back along the cliff, Nico just stopped us in our tracks, and he'd looked over the cliff and he'd seen this incredible kudu bull that was getting quite old, and he said, guys, this is your opportunity right here, you've got to take it. As I moved to the edge of the cliff, I just saw this beautiful old bull exactly what we were looking for. The setup was pretty much perfect. Uh, Richard hung back for a while and Nico and I crept in a bit closer on our knees. I set up in a prone position on the edge of the cliff and I used my bag as a rest, gave me a nice steady shooting platform. The animal was about 150 meters off and from that distance it couldn't see us. We were blended in so perfectly with the rocks, with the bushes around us. When that kudu turns and looks at you, you can only look back in awe at just how beautiful and majestic it is. It's really something to behold. I relaxed, I slowed my breathing, and I pulled the trigger. And that thing went straight down. I could see it through the scope. I could see the animal wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, he's done. Yo. No, he's not getting up again, eh? Yo. No. I can't even describe how I felt when I saw that kudu drop. It's one thing to shoot something, but it's another thing to get really good placement and put it down quickly. And thankfully, I managed to do just that. That was awesome, eh? What an experience. One of the, one of the most sought after species in South Africa and pretty much the animal that, that kind of defines the Eastern Cape, the, the elusive kudu, the grey ghost. So it's, it's great to be able to, to finally get a nice bull. I've been looking forward to this day and it's finally come. Yeah, Matt, uh, I think you did, a, did very well up there, you know, but I just want you to, to take a minute and have a look at this kudu here. You can see that this animal is, is, is no longer a breeding animal, it's post-mature. So, I mean, we, we've not only uh, taken a good kudu bull, but we've done some good by, you know, utilizing an animal that's no longer um, part of the herds. Mm. Um, and that's really something that we at ECB hunting or East Cape Bushfield hunting pride ourselves in. Is yeah. taking animals that, that are really post-mature, no longer yeah. with the herds um, and no longer available for breeding. This is really the type of experience that I'd like to have every client to have, is to just come here and see all the game, experience all the game and then take a good animal, you know, and enjoy the hunt. And this is what it's really about for me as, as a PH and an outfit is seeing a, a happy client with, with, with his animal. Nico put us on the animals perfectly, Matt nailed the shot and I managed to get all the footage with no hiccups at all. Exactly what we had hoped for. We'd done it, we'd dropped the springbuck early on in the day and now we'd got our kudu and all of it was perfectly on camera just as we wanted. This was honestly one of the best hunts I've ever gone on. The hospitality at East Cape Bushveld hunting is second to none and the experience is real. It's an authentic hunting experience. We ticked all the boxes, we got everything we wanted to get and there was absolutely no doubt in my mind that I'd be back soon for another hunt. For more great hunting media, subscribe to In The Zone Hunting Productions on YouTube or follow us on Facebook.